New York Times called Sub Pop Records and talked to a woman there who just started making up words. They were trying to find out what the inside secret dope was. What was what was the uh, the hip language? And I was like, uh, why don't you just give me a word and I'll give you the the grunge slang for it. She just started making stuff up. A lot of it was kind of stuff that she used for herself just for laughs. And next thing you know, it's on the cover of the New York Times and everybody around here is just giggling and snorting. If they're lame enough to try to scrutinize this totally stupid thing, why not fuck with them? And then put, you know, in the caption below, flannel shirt, $85. didn't get a flannel shirt for Christmas from their relatives and you tie it around your waist and you run off and do a stage dive all across America. But up here, because it's lager territory, all these goon balls just wear flannel anyways and then that's what became the stereotype here. I mean, you go around, you know, cities everywhere and you see some real stereotypical grungies, you know, with the Pearl Jam shirt and, you know, with the stocking cap and uh, the, you know the really neat long johns with the shorts and, and you just say I spit on you mannequins in stores with like Long johns and shorts for like 300 bucks. And, <laughs> yeah. It's like we, we dress, got them full. We wear long johns up here because it's fucking cold. cold. When 7th Avenue decided that grunge wear was something they put on the runway, and when Vanity Fair did a spread with people like Joan Rivers wearing grunge wear, that was the only moment for me so far that came close to unbearable. It was our thing that also belonged to people.